Yes, uh, DJ here again today. Hey, uh, I got a couple of 303s, actually three. I sold one already. This is the first one out of the three I'm actually going to shoot. I've got an opportunity to sell and I thought, well, hey, before I uh, actually sell, I might um, give one of these a go anyway. So this is the 1944 um, number three. Uh, it's been uh, it's been rubbed down. The timber looks fantastic. Unfortunately, it's lost a, a, a lot of the military marking. But uh, here under the hood, um, this thing's looking excellent. Uh, we can just take the top part out. I don't know if you can really see that. No rust on here. And, and, uh, I've got a target. We're gonna, I'll show you in a tick. I'll set up about 100 out and give her a few shots and, uh, and see how she runs. Um, so yeah, unfortunately it's a bit breezy today. Again, working full time and having a family and a house, um, you don't always get the get the best uh, best opportunity. So I'm just going to take what I got at the moment and uh, give this a go. So uh, all right, let's give it a few shots and we'll go from there. Yeah, hey guys, I'm not quite sure if you can see this. All right, I got some uh, uh, 303 uh, British cartridges here, rounds of soft points. Now my guess is they could be anything up to 30 years old or possibly even more. They're supposed to be 150, 150 grainers. So, and there is a sequence uh, into how to loading these in the magazine too. So this is gonna be interesting to see how, how we go with that too. Ideally, I'd have the stripper clip. And these rifles are so easy to, to load. I know when I had the stripper clip for the others there, one, two, three, bang, and you had them in there, 10, 10 rounds in, in, in seconds. Okay, so we've got those away. It is a bit breezy out here this evening, so I hope you can hear me all right. And I hope I'm not yelling too much, but... Uh, okay, I'll put four rounds, and try to hit the target, and we'll go from there, so... It's beautifully. That's it. Okay, four rounds into the uh, target now, so we'll step on down and have a look and see how she went in the breeze and, and see how well the nut behind the butt did. That's the savage. Now what have got here? It's a number four mark one is it? Uh, Savage 303, 1942. Something personally I haven't seen before uh, until I was offered the chance to buy it. Uh, uh, US property stamped up here and I think it's uh, well it's obviously part of the US forces that was uh, manufactured for. So I'm gonna give this one a bit of a, a try to the Savvy and uh, see if it measures up. Now just had a quick test fire with this. I put it down to the ground and made sure my hand was right into the road of the bolt. Um, before I came out here today, obviously checked the barrel, it was in good nick and everything else looked pretty good, but we want to make sure some of these old weapons that uh, you're not back behind here, pull the trigger and the bolt lets go. Where's this going to go? Well, uh, you're not going to find out about it because uh, it won't be around. So okay, I'm going to put four rounds at uh, through this now. The sun's just about down here now, so I better move quick. Slide it back to the top. Yep, that's me spent one. Okay, easy as. So I'll get the camera around and you can have a look as we go. Okay, we got him fed. Now, these don't have the volley sights. If you can quite see in there, bring it a bit closer. The kind of peep sight you got there. Didn't quite aim that up right. And there are two settings here as well. That's the 300 yard. Bring that one up there. And that's your 600 yard setting there. So the aim is, well, <laughs> believe is to get the top of the uh, front sight into the middle of the your circle at the back here, and then uh, that's pretty well what you're aiming at. So I'll do that on the white pointer down here on the uh, 
targets. Here we go. Might just see if I can zoom this in too. Drop down the zoom here. There's such a large variation of where you can aim this with the uh, the peep sight. But uh, I'm sure some of the gentlemen from yesteryear got this down pat better than I have. Alright, see if I can go in here a bit for you all. Boy, you're looking right there. Okay. Alright, so here we go. Now I don't know if these rounds are <laughs> what you call perfect, because that actually felt more of a more of a recall than the other one. Let's have another crack. This is my last one. Before the lights out. Okay. Well, it cycles well. It's almost like it hasn't had a lot of work. This is a two groove barrel. This one. And uh, come on, camera, come back here. And the action actually feels fairly, fairly firm yet. So. And the, the bore look look pretty darn good too. So okay, we'll uh, pack up here and then uh, head down and uh, see what the damage was. Let's hope it was good. Okay, right here we go. Uh, this target over here. That's the uh, last one I shot. This is Savage in the, the 1942 model. Um, now that to me is not a bad group for the weather. I haven't shot the thing before. Uh, I've got no idea how accurate those loads are and uh, what, uh, yeah, I've had no experience with the 303 here at all. Same round in the Lisco. She went a bit lower, uh, but spread out a bit more here. So, uh, still got the line, but again, the conditions aren't perfect. And if you're using it for a, a, a long range rifle, it might not be the choice for the, the Lisco. Perhaps you could tweak a bit with the Savage. Uh, but for both for scrubby or uh, pig hunting guns, I reckon uh, either or be, would be perfect. Uh, again, so that's what my findings are. The sun's disappearing now, so I better disappear.